Hi, I'm Deirdre from the Business Insight Company. This video covers the second part of the theoretical introduction to the PCA techniques used in Stardust. Stardust is the segmentation module of TIM. Stardust uses these PCA techniques extensively, so a good introduction to these techniques is required before using Stardust. To summarize, the PCA technique allows representation of high dimension points into a lower dimensional space. The first PCA axes are defining privileged directions that are the best directions on which to project in order to lose as little information as possible. But the PCA technique is also very useful to create correct segmentation models, as we will see in this video. In the first part of this introduction to the PCA techniques, we saw that inside the census income database, each individual is a 7D, 7 dimension, point. We could project these 7D points into 3 dimension using the PCA technique and obtain the following graphic. Using Stardust, you can directly see for yourself the three segments inside the dataset. By simple visual inspection, you discover existing natural segments inside your population. You can even see that here, some people are outliers. The next steps in a segmentation analysis are, first, to create a segmentation model, Segmentation is the action of grouping together, inside the same segment, customers that are similar or close. Segmentation models allow you to automatically assign individuals to the right segment when receiving a new database. And second, describe each segment from a business perspective. We will now see how to create a segmentation model. Let's represent each customer by a 2D point. A segmentation model is a model that assigns a color to each of these points. Each color represents a different segment. Here, we have represented a segmentation model that finds three different segments in the dataset. Segment 1 is composed by the customers in green, segment 2 is composed by the customers in red, and segment 3 is composed by the customers in blue. To construct a segmentation model, Stardust uses the k-means algorithm. According to this algorithm, first we assign randomly one customer to each segment. Thereafter, we assign each customer to the nearest segment. It means that this customer will be assigned to the green segment. This one will be assigned to the red segment because the red segment is the closest one, etc. After, we recompute the center of each segment. For example, the green segment is composed by these two customers and thus the center of gravity is here, in the middle. And we repeat. We assign, once again, each point to the nearest center and we recompute the optimal centers. And we repeat and we repeat until the segmentation no longer changes. Let's see what happens when a new customer arrives. To know in which segment this customer belongs, we have to compute the distance between this new customer and the center of each segment. In this example, the closest segment is the green one, so this customer belongs to the green segment. As you can see, the k-means algorithm uses distances extensively, so we need to define good distances. A segmentation model is composed of a list of centers of each segment, and a definition of the distance to use to compute the distance to each center. With TIM, you can mix several types of distances. The standard Euclidean distance that we just used, the Pearson distance, also named cosine distance. And each distance can be used inside different kinds of space. The original space of the variable, the quantile space, and the space defined by the first axis of the PCA. The Pearson or cosine distance is very useful when using Stardust to do the text mining. When doing text mining, each row of a dataset represents a text document. The cosine distance is commonly used to define distances between text documents. As a reminder, the Euclidean distance between the points A and B is simply the length of the red line here. Now let's take a more real example. Let's assume that we have a dataset with two columns and that each row of the dataset is an individual that is characterized by his age in years and his size in meters. The standard Euclidean distance can be written in the following way. This distance, however, is not very good. Let's take an example. Let's compute the distance between three individuals, A, B and C. A and B are separated by one meter of size, so the distance between A and B is one. In opposition, B and C are separated by ten years, so the distance between B and C is ten. You can directly see that there is a problem here. Graphically, we can see that B is closer to C than A, but the Euclidean distance says the opposite. So there's a problem in the Euclidean distance. The problem comes from the fact that the age axis goes from 1 to 100, and the size axis goes from 1 to 2. The range of the two axes must be similar in order to have a meaningful distance. This is why we defined a normalized distance, where each axis has been normalized to obtain more or less the same range. 
so the age has been divided by 100, and the size stays the same. Using this new, normalized distance, now we have a distance between A and B of 1, and between B and C of point 0.1. So now it's OK. B is closer to C than A. As a conclusion, normalization is important. We must always use normalized distance. If we compare the standard distance with the normalized distance, we can see that the equations defining these two distances are very close. They are nearly the same. The only difference is that, for normalized distance, you have here and here normalization factors. Keep that in mind. Let's take another example. We have a data set with three columns. These three columns are the age expressed in days, the age expressed in months, the size. Using these three axes, we can define the Euclidean distance this way. Note that we are using normalized distance. We can obtain the age expressed in days of an individual by multiplying by 31 the age of the same individual expressed in months. When we are using this relationship inside the equation of the Euclidean distance, we arrive to this final equation. There is something very wrong about this final equation. We are changing the normalization factor. The weight given to the age concept is wrongly multiplied by more than 900. The normalization of the variables is lost when two variables, here the age expressed in days and the age expressed in months, are representing the same concept. Let's represent graphically the age expressed in days and the age expressed in months. Each cross here is an individual, so an individual that is 31 days old is indeed one month old. An individual that is 63 days old is indeed two months old. You may remember this chart from the beginning of this presentation. On this chart, we computed the two PCA axes in order to reduce the dimension. We will do the same on this new population. We will obtain two PCA axes, PCA1 and PCA2. If we compute the coordinates of each individual inside the new coordinate system defined by the PCA1 and PCA2 axes, we will notice that old individuals will have a high value along the PCA1 axis and young individuals will have a low value along the PCA1 axis. So the PC1 axis represents the age concept. PCA2 represents the small error in converting the age from months to days. The values along the PCA2 are completely uninteresting, so we'll simply never use them. Instead of defining the distance on the original axes, age expressed in days, age expressed in months, and size, we will now express the distance inside the PCA axes. PCA1, that represents the age concept, and PCA2, that represents the size concept. Note that we did not include inside this new definition of the distance, the distance along the PCA3 direction, because it's completely irrelevant. You can see that this is irrelevant because the range of values in the PCA3 direction is very small. This new definition of the distance is the best one possible. You can see the range here. It's totally useless. So it's important to know the range of value along each PCA direction because you must drop from the distance definition the PCA directions that have small variances. In this graphic, we see that the variance along the PCA8 axis is very small, so a good distance definition should only include terms from PCA1 to PCA7, and not PCA8. To summarize, PCA is used to do dimensionality reduction, and PCA is used to create distances. We need a correct distance definition so that the k-mean algorithm works correctly and delivers good segmentation models. As you can see, a correct methodology for a good segmentation analysis relies heavily on PCA analysis. Stardust is the only segmentation tool that is directly offering you, in a few mouse clicks, a complete PCA analysis in all the important parts of the segmentation analysis. A brief reminder, a complete segmentation analysis involves two steps. The first step is creating a segmentation model, and we just had a brief overview of this part. And the second step is to describe each segment from a business perspective, and we'll soon see how to do that. The second generation data mining software, TIM, Stardust module, allows you to easily segment your customer base by using the most advanced, state-of-the-art segmentation methodology. The future of database marketing starts right now with TIM. For more information, please visit our website at www.business-insight.com.